Oh, wow. I did not expect this many people in this room. I'm sorry, have you not met yourself? <laughs> that was a shock. Hi, guys. We're so glad to have you back. Uh, thank you, it's a pleasure to be back. It's taken a while to get back here, 15, 16 years, um, but we finally made it. Well, we'll make it worth your while. Sorry? Uh, we'll make it worth your while. Oh, you already have done. Yesterday trip. was fabulous, and today will be brilliant again, I'm sure. That's great, that's awesome. So, I have a couple questions for you, and then we will leave it to all of these much more prepared people. <laughs> um, my first question is, okay, I want to know this about everybody in Harry Potter. Were you a Harry Potter fan before you were in the movies? Was this just an acting gig that you went for? Uh, well, um, I'm both. I mean, I, um, I've been acting from the age of five. Um, and when I was about nine years old, a friend of mine introduced me to this book called Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. And I thought it was really boring. <laughs> um, and, um, <laughs> and he told me to, to skip the first chapter and go straight to the second one. I was like, okay. And then that was it, I was hooked. And, uh, and I just, I read through the first um, three, I think were out at the time, and then um, I queued up at the bookshop to get um, the fourth one. Um, and um, so when the, um, uh, to this day I've never read that first chapter, by the way. Um, <laughs> is it The Boy Who Lived, I think is the first, I've never read it. Um, I don't think there's anything important in there. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, at the age of about 10, uh, they announced they were doing a film. And having been an actor for a while at that point, I was just desperate to be involved with it in any way, shape or form. Um, I, I thought that I would probably be in the background, doing some kind of walk-on role. Uh, never expected to get any dialogue whatsoever, um, let alone to, um, to get a role like Neville. It was um, from, from both a fan's perspective, <laughs> Um, from a fan's perspective and an acting perspective, it was a dream come true, yeah. That's so cool. Um, do you think that Neville should have been the chosen one? <laughs> That's in the first chapter. You might not know the answer, so... Um, <laughs> I mean, what do you guys think? They're probably bigger fans than me, so I'll go with that. One of my favorite shirts here says, Neville could have done it in four books, so... <laughs> I mean, that's your words, not mine. I will argue. All right, so uh, my next question is, can you share with us like one of your strongest memories when you think about being in Harry Potter? What is it, like what first comes to mind? Oh, well, I mean, it's hard to kind of um, you know, triangulate one single memory of 10 years of fantastic memories. Um, it was a wonderful time. Um, there's not really, a single moment that I could say that it was rubbish or I didn't enjoy it or was, you know, it was the whole time was, was fantastic. Um, I remember my first read through um, very, very vividly. I was 11 years old. I met Dan, Rupert, and Emma for the first time. Um, I'd already met um, James and Oliver and, um, and Devon and Murray and a couple of other guys, but I met Dan, Rupert, and Emma for the first time. And um, it, was, it was wild. I mean, as a, as a fan, to be there like, that's, that's Harry Potter. That's Hermione Granger, this is cool. Um, and, then, and then we sat down and we read the film and everyone was there, you know, Alan Rickman and Maggie Smith, and all these amazing people. And I was just, I, I couldn't believe that that's what I was going to be doing for the next six months. Little did I know it was going to be the next ten years. Um, so I remember that really, really well. Um, and I remember just, just sitting around, just, just being kids, just doing kids stuff. And we were allowed to do kids stuff. Um, we had like a we had a soccer pitch that was uh, on the grounds. Um, we had a because uh, we had a heavy, heavily American crew early on with Chris Columbus being the director. Um, so we had like a, a basketball court that was built inside the studio that we used to play on, and we were just, we were just allowed to do kids stuff. And that's why I think um, so many of us have, have, have you know particularly Dan Rupert and Emma have, have stayed so grounded because despite being in this phenomenon, they were allowed to be kids and we were allowed to do it together um, and we were allowed to grow. It was just like being at school, it really was. Um, so I remember, yeah, vividly I remember that, um, that first day that set it all off. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> Alright, my last question, because I feel like 
10 years of your life is a lot, right? But you've, it's quite probably, bad. you've been doing things since Harry Potter, right? Do you want, what, are you, what are you working on now? Do you want to tell us about what's going on? Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, so I've just, I've just shot a film um, down in New Zealand, um, uh, which has been produced by um, Taika Waititi. Um, so it's, really fun. Um, it's this little rom-com, um, which is equal parts hilarious and ridiculous. Um, but it's, it's really sweet and it's really nice and um, everyone in it is brilliant. And um, I have to go do a reshoot, actually, quickly, next week, which is why I have this disgusting beard. Um, it's so itchy. <laughs> I want to get rid of it. Um, I have to keep it because I need it for this role. Um, so I'll be going back down to New Zealand um, in a week to um, to do that, and then um, that should be out sometime um, sometime next year. I hope it's called Baby Done. Baby Done. Very cool. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Well, you should hear from people other than me. So why don't we start taking questions? Here we go. Oh, it's a Gryffindor. We got this, don't worry about it. Muggles. There are so many, <laughs> so many people in here. <laughs> just her, it's just her. Yeah. <laughs> what was your most embarrassing moment? <laughs> There's no one in this room but her, just tell her. How long have you got? <laughs> I mean, you know what, I, I I'm not embarrassed that easily, to be totally honest with you. Um, uh, but I, I, I remember there was one day. It's not. It's not even that funny a story, to be honest. But it was really embarrassing for me. Um, I had a line in, I think, uh, the Half Blood Prince, of which I'm sure you're all aware. I had very few lines in that film. Um, uh, but this was one of them, and. Um, so you've got this kind of pressure of, of, well, I've got four lines in this film. Today's one of them, I've got to get this right. And um, it was really simple. It was just um, four words, good luck, A, Ron. Good luck, A, Ron. I can say I can do it now. Because um, he was going to go do um, the Quidditch um, stuff. And, and so I was wishing him good luck. And uh, it would happen to be the day that the entire like world's press and media were coming in to, to work. Um, to, to, to just watch his film for the day. And they were all on set, all of them, from every, every territory, you know, J Japan, Australia, um, China, North America, er all over the world. And it was a big two-page scene with my line at the very, very end. It's all I had to do was say these four words to put a period at the end of the, the two-page scene. And I messed it up. Um, I was gonna say something. No, I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say like, something a bit ruder than that. Sorry. Um, yeah, but I made a mess of it, is all I'm trying to say. And um, it got to the end of it, and I just went all up to Rupert, and I just went... Gur -gur -gur -gur. <laughs> Sorry, I'll do that again. Um, and then we had to go rewind back to the start of the whole two page, and everyone's there, Alan's there, and... You know, I, I don't like upsetting Alan at the best of times. Um, but he had to do the whole scene again, and I just felt dreadful. <laughs> So that was really embarrassing. Yeah. Thanks Thank you. for that. <laughs> they seemed to think it was very funny. <laughs> okay. So my sister Danielle is actually a fan of your character, but also mostly of the movie Me Before You. <laughs> so what was your favorite part about filming that movie? Um, we... Um, did a lot of stuff at uh, Pinewood Studios mostly, but we also got to go away on location quite a bit, which is not something really throughout my career I've done a whole lot of. Most of the things I've done, both TV and film, have been in studios. We, we used to go a bit of location early on in Harry Potter, but, but after the first two, very, very little. Um, but on this, we did quite a bit of location stuff, and um, we went down to Wales, to Pembrokeshire in Wales, and um, uh, Sam, Amelia, and myself went out for a walk. And um, we didn't really know where we were going. We just went on this big trek throughout the Welsh like hills and valleys, and like jumped a few fences into a few fields. And we basically got charged by some cows. <laughs> um, and like everyone got stuck. And like Amelia lost a shoe in the mud. And so Sam had to give her a piggyback. 
um, like still being chased by cows. <laughs> we just we had a really narrow, lucky escape. We got back over the fence, and all the cows were, came up to see us off. And, and Sam just made this point how absurd that would have been if in the news the next day it had been, you know, Daenerys, Finnick O'Dare, and Neville Longbottom trampled to death by cows in Wales. <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> Fair point. Thank you. Oh, okay. Hi, hi, Ashley. Um, so, what was it like randomly coming back to Hogwarts, being completely different than you were throughout the entire series, and no one noticing? <laughs> like, you, like, better, better way of putting it. Like, all the movies. We're like, that's Neville, of course, and then when they, aka, you know, chapter two, you're like, suddenly you. <laughs> and no one noticed what happened throughout the series of the movie. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> 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 no one remembers us, any Harry Potter fan, they're like, oh, what the hell that happened? <laughs> so, what? Uh, <laughs> Are you asking about his glow up? <laughs> Um, forgive me. What's the question? Like, I think she's asking about what was it like to come back. Oh, just what was it like? What was it? Yeah. yeah. And you're oh. basically suddenly hot. <laughs> Okay. Listen, I'm old enough to be your mother, so I'm just going to settle this down a little bit. There was a moment where you came back from summer, and it was only two months, but you look different. <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. Time out. Um. So sorry. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, honestly, if you want to know how... Hang on, I'm getting a phone call here. This is... No, go away. Um, um, I... I woke up one day and, and read the news um, and um, I, I thought that I'd woken up into some my parallel universe where everyone had gone completely insane. That's what I thought. I mean, I, um, it's very nice. You know, online and in the media, a lot worse things can be said about a person. <laughs> um, particularly an actor in the spotlight, it's, it, it could be a, a, a lot, lot worse. Um, so I, I certainly can't complain. Um, but I just, I never, I never bought into it. I never, I never really understood it, to be totally frank. I, um, uh, I mean, I wore, I wore the fat suit for a long time, for like, since film three, um, and uh, various other contraptions that they came up with um, to make me look less like me and more like Neville Longbottom, I guess. Um, false teeth and, and um, stuff behind my ears to stick my ears out, which no one ever even noticed, but <laughs> had that agony for about three years. Um, so there's all these little things that they did, and then basically in the last film, David was just like, we're just going to get rid of it all. We're just going to be, be you, and we're just going to go with that. And, and, and well, if that helps to show a, a, a level of maturity, or maybe that Neville's not been eaten as well as normal. Um, <laughs> either one's fine with us. Um, so we did it. And, um, I never, I never in a million years anticipated the, uh, the reaction from people. I still don't, again, I, I still don't really understand it. Um, I think it's very sweet, but um, I just try and really focus on um, the work. Really, rather than the aesthetic uh, side of things, unless it's unless it's required, you know. The, for example, in me before you, there was a, there was a lot of training involved with that, and, and Sam and I were in the gym a lot, um, working really hard to get uh, the physicality right for that. Um, and I've done it a couple of times for other jobs, but 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 really, it's um it's not my focus to be honest. Um, I feel very humbled, um, but think you're all insane. Um, <laughs> Be awkward growing up in front of everyone and letting everyone see how you change. 
Oh, it could go the other way, I suppose. Yeah, yeah I guess it could. <laughs> we could be really sad that you're here and like put a, yeah. like a filter over God, what happened camera. to you? <laughs> <laughs> Awful. <laughs> All right, go. Okay, so we know that the Harry Potter series is a movie series, but if it had been a TV show series, what would you like to have seen in this series? Um, that's a really interesting question. I um, think that it would have actually um, served really well as a TV series um, in, in, in the current era right now. Maybe not when it came out, but you know, in the world of Game of Thrones and, 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 and what HBO are doing and, and BBC America and all these kind of things. I actually think it would have it would have translated really well, um, as we'll probably see with a lot of the Rings stuff on, on, on Amazon. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's there's so much. Um, Wealth in the in the story um, in the in the universe, it would have been nice to see uh, a lot more of the Wizarding World itself um, in, in in other countries as well. You know, it's always alluded to. Um, we've seen it a little bit with the Fantastic Beasts over here in North America, but um, you know, there's so much stuff in, in like Eastern Europe um, that we that we talk about the vampires and stuff that people used to go out and all the dark arts things that we never really we got a glimpse of it in the final battle, like all the different um, creatures, but we never really got to see a huge amount. And I thought that. A TV series might have afforded a little more time for a bit more of the depth that, that was in the richness that was in the in the stories, um, and obviously so many scenes that we had to lose, whether we didn't get time to shoot them or or we um, <coughs> excuse me we had to cut them out. Um, uh, one of my favourite scenes in the books, um, which uh, we sadly never got to shoot, was the Neville's parents in Saint Mungo's hospital. Um, it was it was one that we really really wanted to do. David and I really really wanted to do it. Um, it meant so much to us both. I think that David has a very um, soft spot for Neville. Um, he he um, spent a lot of time with me and, and worked on that character a great deal. Um, I think he he really related to Neville a lot and wanted to champion him throughout throughout his his films, um, more so than than had been done before. And so David used to come to me repeatedly um, over, over the months saying, we're, we're going to do it. We've written this scene, we've got it, we're going to do it, it's going to be amazing. Um, and then he'd say, well, we're really trying, we're getting there. And then he'd say, oh, I'm not sure we're going to have time, but we're still pushing it. And then it was, we're just not going to get there. And, and I could see how good he was, that like, he was devastated not to get it in, but he just got away from us. And um, we ended up having to kind of shoehorn that entire backstory into like a, like a 30 second bit in the room of requirement. Um, which uh, was hard work. And so I think with a TV series, we would have had more time to explore that stuff and, and we would have given a whole um, lot more um, uh, inspiration to why characters became why they did, you know, their, their, their reasonings behind that and their motivations. I think we would have seen it a lot more, not just from Neville, but from, from all the characters. Neville, who's so awkward and clumsy and just plain forgetful? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, no, not at all. Um, I was um, very, very um, similar. I mean, I, I think that I was cast in the beginning based on my similarity to Neville, not on my acting ability at all. Um, I um, was very, very similar uh, growing up um, through my school life. I wasn't bullied at all, which is sort of where we kind of differ, but, but in terms of like my shyness, like immense shyness, like even, I never really spoke to all of the kind of the older actors, um, like Alan and Maggie and David Thewlis and Brendan Gleeson, who were all incredibly friendly and approachable. I didn't approach any of them for the longest time because I was uh, cripplingly shy and, 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 and frankly terrified of them all. Um, completely unwarranted, but I was. Um, and um, it wasn't until I was about 19, 20 that I really spoke to them on a level that we were, you know, even Jason will probably be able to tell you if, you, if you speak to Jason today, he'll probably say he didn't hear a word from me for eight years, <laughs> until like the final two films when um, I could actually hold a conversation with him. And so Neville and I took a very similar trajectory in our, in our evolution. And, and I think that helped me greatly um, with portraying him because we, we related so much. Um, and uh, as he evolved and became the character he did, I, I think I, 
towards the end, I, I became um, similar myself. I grew in confidence in, in my own ability and, and in myself as, as just a person. And I was able to have a conversation with someone older than me. Um, so yeah. I'm sorry, mate, I didn't catch that. What animal would you pick for your Patronus? Oh, okay. Um, well, I'm glad you've let me pick, because I did the bloody quiz, and I got, <laughs> I got a tortoiseshell cat. <laughs> I mean, I imagine there's a few cat lovers in here, and I don't dislike cats. I have to, I have to clarify. I might have said something in the past where I said I didn't like cats. I regret that. I apologize. <laughs> I don't dislike them. I just don't like them. <laughs> I am apathetic towards cats. Um, kittens, different story. Absolutely. Absolutely. Adorable. Cats, fully grown cats, are ungrateful. <laughs> um, and that's all I have to say about that. Um, so I don't want to have a tortoise shell cat. Um, but you've said I can pick my own, so I will have a little red panda. That's the cutest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, they are. So you took the quiz, have you... Are you a Gryffindor? No. No, I know. <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a Hufflepuff. characteristics of a Hufflepuff, so if you say you're a little bit like him, that makes sense. I have come to terms with it, yes. <laughs> um, a, few, a few meetings, a few classes, and um, I'm there now. Oh, Hufflepuffs. <laughs> all right. um, hi, my name is Britton. Uh, through the evolution of all the, the Harry Potter movies, who is your favorite person to work with through all the different films? Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's so hard to pick a, a singular person. Um, you know, we all got on so so well. Uh, everyone got on so 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 well, um, and that's why you know these conventions are so amazing because you get to uh, come across people that you haven't seen for years um, and that you you miss, um, like Jason, like Tom, like Emma, you know, all those people. Um, and uh, I guess if I had to, if I had to really pick one person, um, uh, Dan, Dan. Radcliffe was probably, um, as if you didn't know who Dan was, Dan Radcliffe um, uh, was probably, probably yeah, I, we, were, we were very close on set, um, we uh, were very similar in terms of our um, musical tastes, our sense of humour is very similar, we were constantly quoting um, TV shows and films that we, that we liked, um, always making each other laugh on set, um, and I just found him incredibly uh, inspirational, honestly, um, his work ethic was unparalleled. Uh, he set the tone of the film, you know, it's something, a responsibility that I'm sort of learning now at 30 years old um, that a lead actor has on a, on, a, on a film or TV project. I've been fortunate enough to have a, that responsibility over the last couple of years and, um, and, it, it, and it can weigh heavily. You know, you really have to set the tone and the environment and, and it's not just the director's job, it's, it's it, the lead, the lead actor has to, has to uh, pulled out their weight as well in that respect. And Dan did that from such a young age. He, he set the tone on set so wonderfully. It was a, it was a, a, a safe place where people could, could fail. You know, people could try things and they could fail and it was, they were given that opportunity and no one was, no one was made to feel uh, inadequate in any way. Um, and he, he really um, pushed that. Um, and he also always wanted to push himself out of his comfort zone, which he's done since then with musicals and plays and, and, and really interesting film choices. And um, I just find that really inspiring as someone who is, is very rich now and is very famous and can just easily just put his feet up and go, yeah, I'm Harry Potter, I don't care anymore. And he's never done that. And I just find that really, really um, inspiring. Um, and also with it, a genuinely lovely, unassuming, down-to-earth man. Um, so yeah, probably, if I had to pick one, I'll be done. Thank you. Oh boy. Uh, that was wondering, what is your favorite deleted scene from the Harry Potter movies? Oh wow. <laughs> um, oh god. Um, let's think. 
What are they? Oh, well, you know what? Actually, I know exactly what it is because I was just talking about this yesterday. Um, it was all of Peeves the Poltergeist scenes. <laughs> I hope one day they get to see the light of day and you get to enjoy them as much as we enjoyed them on set. Um, the late, great Rick Mayo, who is, was at the time and still is one of my all-time comedy heroes. Um, and I loved him, his TV stuff, and my favorite film at the time was Drop Dead Fred. Um, <laughs> And he sat next to me at the read through. He wasn't even supposed to. He just like he, he picked up whoever's car and just threw it. I'm, like, I'm sitting here. And he sat next to me and he was as wild and bonkers and off the wall as you'd completely hope Rick Mail would be. And just took me under his wing and was the most amazing guy and set me completely at ease. And um, I was so excited to see what he did. And he came on set and the only problem was that none of us could ever keep a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> Through anything that he did. None of us could do it. It made us all laugh painfully. And I remember Chris Columbus practically pulling his hair out saying, hey Rick, can you just tone it down? Because then they're not going to stop laughing if you do it that way. And Rick being Rick didn't know how to do that. He was just always funny. Um, and so um, I just hope that one day, one day you get to see it and, and see just how brilliant he was in that role and how perfect he was in that role. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if you could date one girl from Harry Potter, who would it be? Would it be Hermione, Ginny, or Luna? Boy. Me personally. Then let's make this clear, we're not talking about the actresses, the characters, the characters right? Yeah. Characters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. This is the game. <laughs> I'm not playing the game. <laughs> you don't want to play that game. <laughs> not playing the game. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, probably. Um, <laughs> I don't have to justify it, do I? Can I just say who? It is? Yeah. Um, probably Hermione, I think. I think, yeah. Great answer. Yeah, yeah. She's wildly intelligent, um, and. Um, She'd probably just keep me out of trouble. <laughs> yeah, Hermione. Thank you. If you were to choose what movie you would be in, what movie would you be in? Ooh, wow, okay. Um, I've always... I've always wanted to do a Western. I don't know why. <laughs> Um, I guess my, my dad was obsessed with westerns growing up, and my mum's favourite film is Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Um, I just always thought, I, I love, um, it's, it's like such a bang average, where it's not even really a true, it's such a, like, I don't know, but Maverick, you know the film Maverick? It's a great I, uh, I love that film. I think I love the, the attire. I think it's the clothing that I am, I am the most fond of. Um, I, this is such a terrible story. <laughs> I think I might, I think I, I think I might tell you it. Uh, um, I, when I was 11 years old, there was a girl at my school who I, I heard had a crush on me. And she was having a birthday party and I decided for some reason, I don't know whether I'd seen like a, Clint Eastwood film was. I think I'd seen. You know, I think I think it was Back to the Future Part Three. And I decided I wanted to dress as a cowboy. So I, at the day before her party, I made her make it a, a costume party just for me. <laughs> and no one else. It was just just me dressed as a cowboy and her because she had a crush on me, so she did it as well, and no one else. <laughs> to this day, I feel really guilty about that. I bet you look great. I just wanted to dress as a cowboy. <laughs> so, you want to be in a Western, can you do the accent? Uh, <laughs> this is your audition. Oh my god, you are joking. <laughs> Yeah, 
Get off your horse and drink your milk. <laughs> right, okay. That's not my American accent, by the way. That's not actually it. Passable. Very passable. <laughs> Thank you. What was your favorite line to say to Harry Potter? What was that, Mike? What was your favorite line to say to Harry Potter? My favorite line? Um, uh, this is going to be quite a self-serving answer, I'm afraid, but um, it's going to be the one that I wrote myself. Um, which was in uh, Deathly Hallows Part 2, um, when we blew up the bridge. And Neville comes up and says, that went well. <laughs> uh, that was a Matthew Lewis original. And um, therefore my favourite line. <laughs> in the moment, or did you run it by people? We uh, discussed it a little bit before, we didn't really have anything to say, or whatever was being said, I was like, oh, I'm not sure about that, and then David was like, well, just just make something up, what would you say? I was like, oh, well, can I just be like, really sarcastic, like, oh, that, that was good, that went well, and he said, yeah, try it. And then um, I just went, yeah, I climbed up, and went, that went well, and David was like, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. She is ready for school. No, I'm really short. <laughs> so I had actually heard before you mentioned it that you had different types of prosthetics and things to make you look more like Neville. And when I have to wear things that I'm not used to, I tend to trip or do something really embarrassing. And so I was wondering if you had a particularly funny story involving any of your prosthetics that you had an embarrassing moment with. Um, I, well, <laughs> for the longest time, no one was aware that I was wearing a fat suit. I actually didn't know that. When you said, I was like, oh my gosh, I had I no was idea. too, it was really convincing. I, re I mean, I started wearing it in like film three, and then I think I took it off one day on film five, and I was like, you look different. Wait, the people you worked with? Yeah. <laughs> Last out, nobody saw you walk in. It's like something's different. I was like, I don't know, I've taken my tie off. And it's like, no, it's not like that. Have you lost weight? What, since breakfast? Yeah, it was weird. I, 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 that was like mortifying. Um, I, I, I broke the false teeth twice. And they were quite expensive. They were about 350 quid. So what's that? And back then, probably about 500 dollars. Um, I broke a couple of them, and so they <laughs> they glued them in. <laughs> they got so sick of me taking them out and breaking them that they they glued them in like some old lady. And I could get them out, like fix them, and I couldn't get them out. Um, and I was like 17 at the time. It wasn't as if like I was a child. It was like, um, so that was pretty embarrassing. Um, and mainly because of the same thing, because I wasn't fully confident that Emma didn't know they weren't my teeth. So, yeah, it's pretty, it was pretty embarrassing at times, yeah. But I'm a professional and I just got on with it. Very difficult, yeah, yeah, uh, very difficult. And, and, and I never really got um, any kind of time to practice with them either. It was kind of like on day one, here they are, put them in, let's go. And, uh, and it was kind of, yeah, it was, it was very difficult to, um, to enunciate. And my accent anyway, I'm from the north of England, and my accent is, is pretty tricky sometimes for um, Americans in particular to understand. Um, I'm talking as, as neutral as I can for you right now. Um, this is uh, when I was a kid and I had a much stronger northern accent. Um, it was very difficult for me to, um, to, to make, it, make myself understood. And then when you had the teeth of the equation, it was very difficult. I remember there was a scene um, when um, I was supposed to say the word toad. But in my accent, I'd say toad. And, and Chris Columbus thought I was saying turd. And he found it so painfully funny that they just cut it. <laughs> so I never said it. Oh, Harry, you found my turd.
that's Chris Columbus. <laughs> My question is, um, who was your favorite Hogwarts professor to film with? Oh, uh, Hogwarts professor? Um, like reading the books as a fan? Um, do you mean? Um, to film with. Oh, to, oh like one of the, one of the older guys. Um... <laughs> wow. That was mean, wasn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's a fact, but, yeah. uh, uh, I... I really enjoyed working with um, uh, David Thewlis a lot. Um, D David was a, a northerner like me, <laughs> um, and um, so he was one of the few that I actually probably spoke to <laughs> um, at that young at that young age. And he was very very friendly. To be fair, like every, everyone that came in, I actually have a different kind of um, moment that I think about and go, "Oh, that was actually a really nice time." I remember um, talking to Kenneth Branagh. Um, quite a lot and um, well I mean he sort of talked at me and I sat there very quietly going yeah, yeah. 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 but um, he was very sweet and, um, and Brendan Gleeson um, I remember he, like when I first met him he just gave me a giant bear hug like the biggest I mean he's a big guy anyway but his big hug and I was just like I like this guy um, so he was fun like they were all so great it's very hard to pick one one singular one honestly do you have a favorite professor from the books, though? Who's your favorite? Well, character? coincidentally, it's Lupin. Yeah. So. Ooh, hello. Hi, I'm Audie, and I was wondering, wondering, what was your favorite spell? Favorite spell? Um, I have been changing this from time to time, but I'm trying to stick with one. Um, I think Expelliarmus is my favorite. I don't really know what it does. But I like the way it rolls off my tongue. So, expelliarmus. That's the answer to that. Hi, I'm Kyle. My question was, what was your favorite scene in Harry Potter? Ooh. Um. Uh, that, that I was that I was in. Or oh, oh, yeah, yeah, good. Um. <laughs> I, well, it, it's the same scene that I, I mentioned earlier, the, the, the bridge, when we blew up the bridge in Deathly Hallows Part 2. And, and the reason is, is um, despite it being just a tremendous amount of fun, um, you know, running up and down the bridge, um, we had like, a camera strapped to a quad bike, which I'd never done before, and it, was sort of, it would chase after me, and then I would chase it the other way, and it just would look really great on camera. And we filmed it all at Pinewood Studios, which we, was nice because we never really got let out of Leavesden very often. So to go anywhere else was always a novelty. So we went to Pinewood Studios and we were on the 007 soundstage, which is where you know they've made countless James Bond films over the years. Um, so to walk down through those corridors, you know, see like Roger Moore's picture up and Sean Connery and all these people and and um, be on the, on the actual um, set where they made them and be doing kind of James Bondy cool stuff. It was uh, it was really cool and. Um, we, had, we also had some uh, night shoots, um, which again, a novelty. Get to stay up late, um, sleep in in the morning, it's brilliant. And so I enjoyed night shoots and um, yeah, it was just, uh, I also felt the focus was very much on me. Which as an actor you quite enjoy. So that was nice. Um, so that's my favorite scene. My question is, between a film role or a stage role, which would you prefer? Um, film. A stage is really hard. It's, don't get me wrong, it's, it's, as I've said before, it is the purest form of acting. Uh, the, the reaction that you get from the audience and the changing reactions that you get from your um, fellow actors that can completely change the way you perform a, a line or a scene or can change your intention. It, it's, it, it's, you have to be so engrossed um, 
emotionally and mentally in, in your character and the environment and your motivations and all these things. That you're not thinking on your feet, you're just doing, you're reacting instinctively. Um, and if you don't have that, it's so painfully obvious. Um, and you are so exposed and there's nowhere to hide. Um, and it's amazing for that, for that reason, you know, the things that you learn, um, it's hard to quantify. Uh, you come out of a play and you just you feel like a completely different actor. Um, but the caveat is that it's bloody terrifying. And you are under an immense amount of pressure and you know that, uh, as I say, there's nowhere to hide. The reviews that will be, that will be coming out will be about you. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's really hard work. And for, for however long you are there, um, three months, six months, that pressure, that weight, never really lets up, um, and it makes it very difficult um, in terms of uh, like home life, even because you just you can't be present. All of your emotional energy is 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 in this is in this project. Um, whereas I think that uh, film and TV affords you a little more uh, leeway with that, a little a little uh, wiggle room um, that a play just doesn't. Um, you know, when you when you're out there on the stage every night, you just you've, You've got to be on. Um, there's no take two, um, and and that's an immense amount of uh, of pressure. So uh, I like them for different reasons. Um, but if you ask me right now, because I'm an inherently lazy man, um, I'd rather do a film. <laughs> All right, I think we have time for one more question. ask if you could bring to life one mystical creature, which mystical creature would it be? Um, um, uh, <laughs> what is the, the, the hippogriff is cool, that is cool, you better fly around on that. I quite like, um, centaurs are pretty cool, um, but they're a bit, 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 bit mean aren't they? Difficult. 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 Yeah, they're gonna be yeah, difficult. Probably. I don't have time for difficult. Mind you, hippogriffs also quite difficult. Also difficult, yes. Um, very, very difficult. Very difficult. <laughs> um, um, Not pixies. Oh my goodness, you people, I think what we're noticing is all of the imaginary creatures are difficult at best. Yeah, all, they're all the nightmare. The, 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 what, about, what about a nice little house elf? There. But like, I would keep it to do all my stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's not a free elf. <laughs> Let's do it all. I'm gonna end this on a dark note. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm lazy. I need to clean them. Listen, it's your show, man. You do what you want to do. Thank you so much for this time. That's it. Like, we have.